Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of All The Mod 7 In The Sky. So this pack just came out, we're in Minecraft version 1.18. It's almost the same as the regular All The Mod 7, as far as I understand. Give me a sapling. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Wait, we have Vein Miner in this, right? Yes, perfect. We gotta first get our hands on some resources. Oh, we got free steak, nice. First resource we'll need is some cobblestone. We get a chance at some andesite stone or cobblestone, I believe. Oh, the, <laughs> the tree just grew. Yeah, and 2x2 two two crafting gives us our first cobblestone. And the quest. Crafting table is default recipe, right? Yes. Next thing we need is a stone hammer. Also a quest. And the stone hammer we have to use to hammer down the cobblestone, which should give us gravel. The gravel we can hammer again for sand. Uh-huh. And the sand, I think, one more time for dust. Yeah, and the dust then we can use in a sieve. And we get various different resources, which we can then process. So to go about getting our sieve, we're going to first need some string. Which we can get from using a silkworm. Applying these to the tree makes them infested. And we can break this once again for string. You guys know how this goes, right? If you've been playing Skyblock packs. I haven't personally for many, many years. I mean, FTB Interactions was the last one I played. But that's not really a Skyblock pack, right? Yep, this is only a percentage chance, but we gotta roll the dice here in the early game. So what is the goal for the series? Well, it's to make this thing, the ATM star. This basically combines every aspect of the pack together. These are some pretty nested crafts right here. Looks like we're gonna be getting into some magic, tech, farming, basically everything in here. We got integrated dynamics. We got the Twilight Forest, Applied Energistics 2, Create, Blood Magic and Batania, RF Tools, Deep Mob Learning, or Hostile Neural Networks as it's now called, Mechanism, Project E, Alchemistry, and that's just to name some of the mods, there's so many things I'm excited about here. Back to some good old fashioned modded Minecraft, right? But I think the first thing we want to do here is give ourselves some space to work with. And I think we got three or four layers of dirt here. Might as well also plant some of these seeds, they conveniently give us some tilled soil here. What else we got? Some barley? Sure. And we'll also need a lot more stone. Since we're very limited on our block choice right now, I think our op basically our only option is to use wood. Normally the skyblock packs give you some bedrock. I want to find that if possible. Yeah, here we go. Perfect. Oh, and you know what? Look at this. It's not even in the center of the chunk. Yeah, it's way off. We gotta work with what we got, right? Ain't no way we're changing this thing, so... Alright, so we got ourselves some space to work with. I left the farm up there since we have no way to move the water right now. Made sure to keep a grass block. I don't know if we get any sort of grass seeds, but I want these things to spread. I also made us a furnace, smelted up some of the wood for charcoal, and that allows us to get some torches to light up the area. I also made us up eight more sieves. You used to be able to do this in an AoE fashion. I assume that is still the case, but I want to get the next tier of mesh. Next tier is flint, which means we need to get some gravel, and quite a bit more gravel, so I'm going to be holding right click for a while. And we should remember to compress this cobblestone. I think it's much more efficient to hammer it down this way. We can compress the block, but we can't compress the hammers, right? It doesn't look like it. Okay. And we can directly craft the gravel into flint and upgrade the string meshes into flint meshes. Now with the flint mesh, we can sift more gravel into various different metals. Actually, we can get iron this way. Yeah, we're going to have to do this a lot and automate this process. Let's first of all get the rest of the flint sieves. Oh my goodness, inventory management in the early game. We need some chests. Let's try to stay organized at least, but we have applied energistics in this and storage drawers. In fact, when I scrolled through this list of mods here, we've got quite a lot of storage options, which is really, really nice. It's probably more efficient to sift some of this dirt. The only problem is we end up with, look at, look. <laughs> we don't have the inventory for all this stuff. All right, perfect. We got ourselves nine flint meshes. Before we upgrade to iron though, I want to make us some barrels. Like so. And the barrels is how we can convert leaves or saplings, I think, into dirt. We can also convert water into witch water, and I don't know what that is exactly. But we need it for the quest, so we'll do it. Next thing is to make soul sand. So we gotta take some spores, convert dirt, place the barrels over the mycelium. Uh, we do have to get some water somehow, so we need some more iron. And we have some gravel here from an unclaimed quest. Can we actually sift some of this basalt? We've been getting granite and diorite and basalt. Can we sift this as well? It doesn't look like it. Blackstone? No. It looks like that only goes through specific meshes. All right, we need 12 iron pieces. We have 13, which is good. Craft those into raw iron. Smell all that up in a furnace. And we can craft our bucket. All right, with this, we can move the farm. And we also want to make an infinite water source, which means we need a second bucket. 
No, we need a <laughs> we need a second water source first. And to do that, we can make a crucible. And I think fill this with any living material. Eventually, it's going to give us a water source. Very slowly. Actually, it does give it a heat source. Increase this. Uh, it looks like with a torch. No, it doesn't. Heat is still at two. Okay, so we're waiting a while. Well, in the meantime, I'm going to use the remaining dirt that we have to expand our farming capabilities. And you know, I just noticed something. You see up there on the map, where it says we're in mushroom fields? That means we don't have to worry about any mobs spawning. I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse in the early game here. I think that's a good thing, right? It means we don't have to worry about lighting things up properly. Obviously, because you don't get any hostile mobs in the mushroom islands biomes. Alright, and we are in 1.18, as I mentioned, so we should be able to water log slabs in this. And I suppose we just plant an assortment of different seeds that we have here. Oh, and we do get grass seeds. Nice. Uh oh, we have visitors. <laughs> I guess these guys have different conditions to regular hostile mobs. Got him. You earned one level. Click here to access the GUI. Oh, what is this thing? I don't know what that is. <laughs> but I think that means it's time for a bed. Can we make wool? Yes. Alright, sweet dreams. Alright, now that we got water, we can also grab the witch water. I don't remember exactly why we need this. Like I said, it's been a while since we've played Skyblock, but the first thing I definitely want to rush here is a crucible. And we can craft that by taking some bone meal and clay. The bone meal we got from Sift and Dust, and the clay we got from our barrels. This porcelain clay we can use to make unfired crucibles. We can actually make two of these things right off the bat. Cook these up in a furnace. All fired up. So if we give these a heat source, I have some campfires here, and some cobblestone. This should convert this into lava. And with the lava, we should be able to automate cobblestone generation. Alright, how long is this going to take? A while. More waiting. <laughs> I guess we farm some more wood. I've been farming some spruce wood. I do want to get to some building today. But since we're poor, we can't really afford too much right now. And it, oh, that just converted the mycelium. Yeah, it's not going to be anything too fancy right now. Oh, of course we don't hit the top. <laughs> Nothing too fancy on the base today, I don't think. And honestly, I don't have a plan. But hopefully we can come up with something cool by the series end. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pillar up there. Okay, we gotta grind out a few more pieces of cobblestone manually. Sift for a bit more iron. Uh, we need enough for a second bucket. And the reason for the second bucket, one we can fill with water, which we now have our infinite water source. Second one we can pick up some lava. And with a piece of glass and some wood, we can make our coal gen for days tier one. Which surprisingly is not a quest. It doesn't seem like the quest book is that fleshed out, to be honest. But that might be a good thing. It might give us some creative freedom. We can basically do whatever we want to get to this ATM star. Okay, so question, does this thing automatically output? Yes. Awesome. We're making cobblestone. No more clicking dirt. <laughs> I want to upgrade all of these meshes into the iron variant, which I think is next. This should give us a much higher yield at some resources. Oh, and it looks like also unlocks some unique recipes here. Yeah, this cobblestone generator is pretty slow. It looks like one every two seconds, something like that. So we'll want to upgrade this fairly soon. All right, it's been a while later for me. I upgraded this chest. I've processed quite a bit of gravel by now. Let's first of all upgrade these meshes as we go. I think we have enough for three iron meshes. But we have a plan. I think I have a plan on how we want to progress here. I want today to be the last time we have to sieve manually like this. And there's a few different options on ways we could actually automate this process. From what I read, there was actually a mod developed specifically for this pack to be able to sift automatically. But we're not going to use that. I want to try out something different here. I don't know if it's going to work out or not, but hopefully it should be fun. Oh, there's our first diamonds. And we got two of them. Nice. The chance, I think, is very rare in an iron mesh. All right, there's the last two flint upgrades. Okay, first part of this plan is we're going to have to start sifting dust and make a new hammer. The dust through an iron mesh should give us a chance at some redstone. Yeah, we got 14 out of a stack. That's not too bad. Along with some glowstone. We've also run out of chest space as well, so we'll make another gold version. Wait, silver first, right? Iron first. We'll also get going smelting up some of these raw resources that we've already sifted. Oh yeah, these upgraded meshes definitely make a difference. Look at all this stuff. I see quite a few diamonds here as well. Yeah, so from here I sifted the rest of the gravel bags that we've made. And then I crafted up some shears and gathered some leaves. I wanted to start sieving leaves, as when you sieve leaves you get a chance at some mineral saplings. You might be able to guess already where this is going. Oh, these things are going to be so annoying to cut down. 
because some of the logs have the fruit in them, it, does, it doesn't let you vein mine it all at once. Oh boy, at least we only need a little bit of this. Yeah, we're after the mineral berries and the mineral chunks. Yeah, so a little bit unusual, but I want to rush integrated dynamics to be able to sieve automatically for us. So the main thing that we'll need to do this is a player simulator. This is a very expensive item at this stage of the game, actually. Which makes me question if this is actually viable or not, but I don't know, we're committed. <laughs> we're going to make this work. However, one of the things that's stopping us from getting this is these logic directors, which means we need crystallized chorus chunks. And to get these, we need protochorus, which means we need ender pearls. We have the mineral berries already. I think the best way for us to get ender pearls right now is to use some of the blaze powder, some gunpowder, and some gold. All of which we can get from seven. And we should be able to craft our philosopher stone. Very powerful item right here. Yes, four iron and a philosopher stone gives us one ender pearl. We need a lot of iron. Yeah, a lot of iron. <laughs> Oh, there's half a stack. Okay, I forgot to put that in there. Combine these with the berries, we get our protochorus. And these, I believe, have to go through a squeezer, right? This seems doable. More iron. You know what? Let's use the first diamonds to upgrade the sieves. And actually, if we're after iron specifically, it seems that sand is more efficient through the diamond mesh. It gives us a 50% drop chance. Compared to just a 15 with gravel through the flint, f through the iron mesh. To make our life easier as well, we'll use an iron wand. Oh, I guess that's another thing. We have to think about how we want to make gravel. I'm not sure we can generate this directly at this stage, so I think we have to process cobblestone. One problem at a time, though. <laughs> Sim first, ask questions later. Alright, one squeezer. Alright, it's been a long time since I've actually used this thing. I remember using some sort of armor stand in FTB interactions. I don't know if that still works or not, but I think... Yeah, we're getting liquid chorus. We need a few buckets of this, I think, so yeah, we're gonna be smashing this for a while. Let's just craft as many pearls as we can get right now. Oh, you know what? I think we have to take it out of here. I don't think it's making any more. We gotta get some sort of fluid pipe. Maybe mechanism? We need steel. Oh, metallurgic infuser. You know what? Actually, how about the pipes mod pipes? We don't get our buckets back, unfortunately. Let's grab a wrench. And we'll need a tank to store it in for now. Okay, if we set this to extract, yeah, like this, it does empty this out, and that should allow us to pop the next chorus. Or squeeze the next proto chorus, I guess. Yes, perfect, okay. So we've got to get our hands on some black dye, since there definitely won't be any squid spawn in here. At least I don't think they spawn in mushroom fields. I think we can waterlog one of these sieves. Please don't go everywhere. And if we sieve sand through this thing, it gives a unique loot table. I think this purple thing, whatever that is, is from the waterlogged loot table. Let's maybe, oh, there's one. Yeah, with the black dye, we can make a drying basin. That means we can dry off this liquid chorus. It should turn into a block. I think there is a mechanic. yeah, there we go. There's a mechanical version which takes RF, so we will probably upgrade to that later on. But if we uncraft this block, we can get our crystallized chorus chunks, and this is what we need to craft the logic director. So we actually get four at a time, and I think we only need eight to get us started. Yep, there's two crafts of those. We'll also craft up some logic cable. We'll need a few variable cards. We need some paper. We have some sh- oh. Oh yeah, I forgot this grows very tall in this. We lost some. <laughs> some went over the edge, it's all right. Oh, I think we have to farm more mineral trees. We're out of this stuff. I think the only other way is to get the mineral comb from bees. There seems to be a lot of produce that comes from these bees. You know, this is a very long-winded way of doing this. We probably just should have followed the quest book. Oh, well. See ya. <laughs> oh, poor guy. He's gone. <laughs> no, what we need here is a slime sapling. We really, really need a slime ball. I didn't think this through, actually. Oh, yeah, slimy dirt. How do we get slimy dirt? Wait, I think we can... Yeah, we can buy slimy seeds. Then plant it on dirt. Now we can plant the sapling. Okay. And we should get a slime ball from this. Nice. That should allow us to get these input variable transformers, which take sticky pistons. And now I think we should have enough for the player simulator. I don't think we have enough actually for two though. It's actually quite a nested craft. The last item in pourer and put it all together with an emerald and there is our player simulator. Nice. Player simulation. With this we can basically do everything a player can do. I can't pick this up though. Maybe we should get a wrench. Yeah, not too bad a recipe. Alright, so before we go setting up our sieves, I think I want to relocate this and give ourselves some more space once again. And you know, I may actually take inspiration from the FTV Interactions base and use some of this mineral log to decorate the base with. I wonder if it has a stripped variant now. Oh, it does. 
Huh. I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure I really like that. I do like the planks though. The planks look oh wait. The planks have changed. This is definitely a different texture, right? I'm not imagining things. I don't know if I like these as much. Oh that's right, it was for Soul Sand. And the quest. But new plan. We're gonna go for a new block palette. We're not gonna use mineral anymore since I don't like that texture. Instead I want to make an igneous extruder, which means we need constantan, which is nickel and copper, I believe. We can get that from using an ore hammer. And instead of getting any sort of alloy furnace, I think we can just shapeless craft the dust and then craft these together and we get constantine grit and I believe we can just smelt this stuff. We have to make invar a similar way and we're actually out of iron again. This is actually such a slow start, it's, it's crazy. But hopefully we should be out of the early game soon. But not if we keep getting attacked by phantoms. <laughs> there goes 21 levels, I guess. Are they still- they're still here. Okay, I've been messing with some block combinations. I'm not totally sold yet. We've got a stone variant from Chipped. Once we have the exchanging gadget and some more block variations, I might actually change it out. But I got the Igneous Extruder set up here. One for regular stone, one for netherrack. Anyways, to get this automation going, we do need a bit more iron again. And I thought this would be a really good time to test out this player simulator. So I'm gonna make one more. I think we're just missing an emerald. That gives us a second one. And we also need a spare regular item interface. Okay, so the plan here is to have a set of sieves. Either, I think this works up to 5x5, five five, but we might just stick with 3x3 three three for each setup. It depends on our input resource generation rate. But then we can have two player simulators for each one, and then an interface connected to a regular drawer or some sort of inventory, which will store the input material, in this case, gravel. The first player sim is going to click an item. Oh, that's right, we need a logic programmer. Yeah, it's just a crafting table and a block of crystallized mineral. And we can make it portable. Okay, so the first thing we want to program is the gravel. So we want an item type, and we give this a variable card. That will give us a variable card for gravel. The first one, we want to click the specific item of gravel, which it will take from this inventory. Very good. And the second one, we just want to click empty. Uh, the top one, I guess. Oh, actually, wait a second. It looks like it's working with just one. Oh, maybe we don't need two of these things. But does it speed it up any? That is the, that is the thing. Maybe if we change ticks per operation down to like, I don't know, two ticks per operation? Yeah, that's almost too fast. <laughs> Maybe this one we need to keep up as well. Wait a second, what if we change the item transfer rate? Yeah, then it puts all nine in at once. Look at this. Perfection. <laughs> Completely free as well. Okay, we know the concept can work. We just have to clean up around here and implement it over in the new setups over there. Okay, firstly, let's unlock some of the quests. We need to make some iron furnaces. Quest complete. The quest also calls for a coal generator to make some basic RF. But importantly, that unlocks part two of getting started. And suggests we make a magmatic dynamo, which I think we might actually do. We need some more invar. All right, there's three magmatic dynamos. And for item collection, I think we invest in the vacuumulator. Yeah, if I remember correctly, this thing can just teleport items into its inventory, which is gonna be ideal. We'll make three. We are short a little bit of redstone, but we can process that using our new sieve system over there. Should work all the same, as long as we put dust through instead of gravel. There we go. Give me redstone. And we'll use the redstone to invest in some energy pipes to transport some RF around. Okay, and finally, I think we have to decide how we want to make our gravel. I'm leaning towards the mechanism crusher. It's very easily upgradable and very easy to automate as well. Oh, for that though, we need to make some basic control circuits, which means we need the metallurgic infuser. Okay, it's pretty easy to make at this point. We might as well make all four. Nah, we'll, we'll make two to start. And for now, we can hook this up to our magmatic dynamos. Give it some energy pipes. A bucket of lava. We're out of lava. You know, one of the things I wanted to test, actually, is we're getting uranium. I think this counts as a higher heat... Oh, yeah, this is heat 20 compared to just heat 4 from the campfires. These make way too much noise, anyway. We gotta get rid of these things. Okay, how much are we gonna generate here? 20, 16, 14, 30, it's dropping. <laughs> oh, I guess his buffer is full. That's why we're not making very much. All right, there's some basic control circuits. Perfect. Everything else for the crusher seems pretty easy. And we already have a method of item transfer. We can use these pipes again. I think it's assembly time. Let's see if what I've got in my head is going to work out here. I bet we're missing something. Oh, 0.4% chance at netherite, look at this. We got it, we got the first one. No, what we're actually after here is quartz though. All right, 
Alright, well, we have something in front of us. Uh, whether it works or not, I don't know. First of all, though, how do we mute this? I guess we've got this inbuilt muffler. Can we actually just mute from this rather than making muffler upgrades? I guess that kind of works. That saves on some resources, sure. Okay, so right now we have three setups here. The first one being for gravel, we'll, we'll sift gravel in the middle. This one here being for dust, and we've also got sand. Now, there is four more resources that I counted. We also want to consider setting up a sieve for crushed netherrack so we can get nether quartz and netherite. Crushed endstone seems viable as well. And also crushed skystone, I noticed, can give us charged certus crystals. That seems very powerful, actually. Oh yeah, and potentially soul sand. We may do soul sand for nether quartz that's a slightly higher yield like this. But that's something I think we'll set up once we have the basics up and running. So the first one is self-explanatory. The crusher outputs its contents to the drawer. And then we're going to have the player simulators on the sieves up there. We're taking cobble from the cobblestone generator that's being transferred via this item pipe and it round robins between the crusher to be crushed to gravel and also the crucible to make lava which is then piped out on the fluid pipe out the back, powers the magmatic dynamo and the dynamo powers the crusher. Aha, uh -huh. so it's basically the same on this one as well except here we have universal pipe and the universal pipe can actually transfer items, fluid, energy and gas all in the same pipe. It's a bit like the EIO conduits only I think it can only input or output, it can't do input and output from the same side, which is fine in this case. It just means that we have to have the fluid pipe for the fluid on the other side, since we input cobble from this front face of the crucible. And instead of just the one crusher, we have two crushing cobble into gravel and then gravel into sand. And that's going to be our next sieve output, or sieve input, I guess. And it's the exact same on the left hand side, except we have a third crusher to make dust. Okay, so let's try to get at least the gravel one operational. We're out of iron again. And if we have that all made, it means that we should be getting trickles of iron coming in. You know what, I'm going to steal some of these meshes here. And I'll even convert some of them to diamond, sure. Okay, so let's implement our player simulators here. I, we're going to have to do a lot of grinding to get another few of these things to flesh out all four or all seven setups if we end up doing them all like this. We may actually end up just going with the, the meta way. <laughs> After all this. Yeah, th these were the blocks I was talking about, the flux sieve. I ended up testing these things in creative and there is actually an upgrade which lets you do a stack at a time and that can way out compete these player simulators so we may end up just caving in and switching to that but that does require nether right so this does beat it out without any upgrades as it can only do one every like five seconds it's it's terrible oh interesting it actually throws it in the air <laughs> that is a very interesting mechanic right there i didn't know that was possible what happens if we put the sieve down okay Actually, you know what? Let's set up the collection first before we turn this on. Otherwise, we're going to have items everywhere. Okay, so we're going to have storage drawers as the outputs. But since, as you can see here, we get only pieces, we have to craft these in a 2x2 two two crafting table. We could potentially use Create for this, actually. But I'm not sure that it's going to go fast enough. I think I'm leaning towards this Flux Compactor. Another four iron blocks. Wow. Wow, okay, we've got some more sieving to do. Oh, look who decided to show up. Well, I was doing some sieving here. He sells Thunderforge leg guards, should we do it? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, at the very least, we're taking his leads, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure it's a quest as well, and I don't know if we can make leads. Oh. And he's gone too. Wait, I think they're... <laughs> Let's get those leggings. Maybe we can mend relations with this guy. Yeah, he's happy. What a deal. I want the leads though. Oh, I bet they dropped with the llamas. Oops. <laughs> okay, I was able to make up this flux compactor here. This thing will output to the bottom automatically. It's going to go into a drawer controller. And actually, this is functional storage. It's not storage drawers anymore. I believe they're actually two different mods, but they work in more or less the same way from what I can tell. Anyways, from our vacuumulator, this is going to pick up all of the drops which appear above the sieves. That's going to get an item pipe. I don't see the augment anywhere to automatically push the contents out of the machine. Let me know if you know what that is called. But anyways, once it hits the compactor, we also want to send some stuff into the storage controller. Since there's things like coal, which we just want to store directly. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit different to regular storage drawers. I think we have to link these together. Wait, we want the action to add. Yeah, like this. Yeah, so that seems to have added these blocks of drawers to this controller. And we also want to lock them, and there is a separate configuration tool for that. It's not a key anymore, but it does give you the similar sort of pad lock pad on the top of the drawer. So that if we take out all the flint in this drawer, it stays locked as flint and only allows flint inside this thing. The unfortunate part about this compactor is it does take energy. I don't know where we're going to get that from. We're already kind of squeezed the way we are. And in all the time I've been doing some crafting, we've, we're only at 200 gravel here. But anyways, it is working. The vacuumulator is picking up all the items. It looks like we 
maybe not have enough transfer rate here. I'm not sure if these pipes can be upgraded. I think I have some pipe upgrades. I don't know if that actually increases the transfer rate though. Maybe? Did that do anything? It looks like it. Perhaps not enough though. We may need a second connection on this. So since we've got some things to figure out here, I think I'm just going to unlock the drawers and let the PCs be stored in the, in the drawers. Since we can't get this compactor to work, at least not without upgrading our power. We're out of gravel already. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty big drawer wall here just for gravel. But at least it's being automated now. It's no matter how slow it is. Oh, we've got some spillage just to figure out. But one more thing before we wrap up this episode. I would like to look into a way to get some tools. We're going to have to do something about inventory management soon as well. Look at all this. <laughs> this can be merged into the drawers once we have all those set up. I'll do that between episodes, I think. But let's see if we can get ourselves a pickaxe, an axe, and maybe a sword as well. We're going to have to do some combat soon. You know what? Perhaps today we just stick with something basic like an iron set. But we do have Tinker's Construct in this, so I think maybe we work towards the smeltery. Even though we don't really have much to put in it right now. Oh, that's right. First of all, we have to get the seared melter. There's that weird smeltery controller recipe in 1.16+. plus. I forgot about this thing. But we should be able to make it happen if we make some more clay. We just gotta put more dust through these barrels with water. Craft together with sand and gravel for grout. This should smelt into seared bricks, or seared something. Yeah, seared bricks. And crafting up the various components gives us a complete Tinker's Construct smeltery here. I'm still missing the basin on this side. But we do have it automatically being fueled using the same sort of tech that we used for fueling our dynamos over there. I noticed we also have Torchmaster in this pack as well, so we can use the Feral Flare Lanterns for easy lighting. We'll need to figure out a location for this thing. But it's the same recipe as Nomi Factory, so they're basically free. Anyways, I tidied up around the crushers here. I'm really not a fan of this nether rack here. Who thought nether rack was a good idea to build your base with? <laughs> but yeah, I've just been cleaning up a little bit. I tried to merge some of the, the drawers here. Since we're playing Skyblock, I think it's only appropriate that we pick up a magnet. I hope there's a toggle for this. Oh, that's cute. Bing bong. I assume there's a slot for this thing. Oh, nice, and there is a keybind for it. I also want to see about implementing these integral components. I think these things can go on any thermal series machines. Oh yeah, and it does increase its max production rate, so I think there's three tiers of these. Anyways, yeah, we've got a lot of things to figure out here. I'm going to try to do some cleanup between the episodes. But that is going to do us for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>